Jehova Malak, Ola Molamat, Jehova Malak, Yami Rakis, Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios, Jehova Erdonai, Jehova Elohi, Kurios Tios Pantacreta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Elda et Jehova, El Emuna Jehova, Ibas Lian Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta, Basilios, Basilian, Kai Kurios, Kurion, Jehova, the Bar Halal, Elohim, the Bar Halal, Jehova, Elohim, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura, Derek, Emuna Bakar, Mishvat, Shawa. The Megalogai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. A training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself up to unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkano, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind of this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Not that we shall end up our life as foolish ones without having any later end wisdom or knowledge, but rather becoming wise enough in the standards of doctrine wherewith Christ our Lord our God has delivered into our hands long before while we were still in our mother's womb. This great infallible and ignorant word of God, when he compares to Timothy, Apostle Paul says that in 2 Timothy 3, the purpose, the, the manner of life, the doctrine, what I have been living, you cannot be like the people in the past who were ignorant and arrogant like Genesis and Jambres, whose failure could be made evident for you because they have neglected the word of God. But you, right from the time of your brafos, till you were in your mother's womb, not had to come out. From that time you have been given the scripture so that you could become wise unto salvation. The calling wherewith he has called us to preach the good news to the perishing, to edify those who are believing, and make up our life as an example of Christ. Because we have been told that being indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, when we are in Him and He is in us, then the very word what He is preaching to us, we shall stabilize it. Understanding these things for us, the things which Lord God, the Father, has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past, using the privacy of our priesthood in confession of our sins, Let's come back and learn the word of God which has been prepared for us in today's date, in eternity past. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the pale wonders of this great and unique word of the Lord my God. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace to learn the word. Father, we pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit would enlighten and challenge us the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date so that in nothing we shall be shattered on this earth, but rather we could make up our lives 
advance in obeying the word of God and make the adversary to tremble because of the token of obedience what we have shown for you and that great life of obedience should become in return a token of perdition to these adversaries to the section father the word alone reigneth forever and forever we pray that lord god the holy spirit would enlighten and challenge us by this message that we are going to learn in christ name we pray father amen the unique life what we are enjoying in this great and unique dispensation of the church age when once the rapture of the church or death which ever could occur first in our life so that we are no longer in the tabernacle of this flesh we may not enjoy the great things that have been ever given for us in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit in the great communion of this mystery doctrine of the church age while writing ephesians apostle paul while he declares this great mystery doctrine he teaches to us for this cause i bow my knees and he goes on to tell from verse 7 of chapter 3 particularly to enlighten the minds of these people who have fallen apart to know the very purpose of their calling in this life to realize what a great life that has been given to them in this church age he says beginning with verse number 7 i have been made a minister according to the dorian gift of god which is a supernatural ability the supernatural gift given by god the father even to the present time to those who are faithful bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers it has not been given a fem- to a female but rather it has been given to a male so that they could communicate with dogmatical authority and that's what it is not to become tyranny or anarchy in your lives but to expound to you and make you to understand what is the fact of life when you understand this fact of life your hearts would burn and you would be the people to weep bitterly in your soul and get back to understand how much we are grieving and squelching and vexing and lying and resisting and not performing the great and unique will of this great lord god the father who has ever given for us this life because we are creatures and he being the creator so in 37 he says according to this dorian gift of god which is been given unto me by the effectual working of his power the word is energian of this dunamis ability which is of god we establish in your life the authority of the word of god by expounding it thus you can realize we have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher it is not been caught or it has been not trained or it is not been taken into the thoughts saying that all the education under the sun can qualify you ever to have this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher it is the gift the energy and power which is by god that is the dunamis ability it is not exousia exousia is authority given for us in john 1 to well as well to become the sons of god but over here when we look it is dunamis the power because for the word power there are four greek words one is dunamis again one exousia kratos is kon manifesting power showing the ability power of a strength all these things you have in the greek but over here the word which has been used this supernatural dorian gift is from the god which is according to the standards of dunamis ability and which operates and which is energia operating power therefore in colossians 4:17 and apostle paul writes to our keepers the ministry which you have received from the lord therefore the same you fulfill it plera o make it to completion today many people they receive the ministry of the lord and they think it's a ministry from the lord because they don't have any other things to do, to, to do on this earth because of the fattened belly which they have to feed and they do not realize that if this ministry is from the lord then they have to fulfill it what they have to fulfill from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 to 21 as we read in nehemia 8 7 to 9 the people the levites mentioning their name who gave sense with great ability to teach them the difference what it was between holy and profane they gave sense to these people to understand the same thing we read in habakkuk 2 to malachi 2 7 
and we need to distinguishly make clear for them to understand so that when they would read it out, they would run to do the work of the Lord God. But we are making not clear in our lives so that others could read it and they could run. So the right purpose of this one is to give sense, to give you shakel kind of understanding, intelligence in that. And not only just to give you the shakel kind of orientation to the life of God, but also to eventually complete it, as Apostle Paul says. I have not shunned anything over the span of three years. I have taught to you day and night the entire counsel of God. Therefore, I am pure from the blood which could be only upon your own heads and I have washed my hands in that. The same thing in Jeremiah 3.15 when he says, He shall give you shepherds after his own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. The same thing over there in Malachi 2.7. The people will come there for what? To learn knowledge. That is to take in Bible doctrine. And the same thing, what is the purpose to fulfill this ministry? The reason is very simple. He says, exegete the passage from Genesis 1.1 till to the Revelation 20 to 21 and let not to go even a single word in that. It is not that you are not iota or even even Carrera in that. It is not that some of the passages for some people they are interesting, some of them they will neglect. If you don't have the 66 books in you, you are not complete. As a right man is incomplete without her woman. Or without her right woman. You have the 66 books as a gift of revolution given for us to learn not even to let go iota upon iota and Carrera upon Carrera. Therefore, there is a word for us to learn which says in Psalms 119 in the cop file of 146, 145. And over here we look the very purpose of our life, why God the Father still keeps us alive. And if we are being kept over here, the first priority for us is to gather in the word of Lord God as the more than necessary breath or food that we take or consume. Therefore, he says in 145th verse, which is very, very important, in the Cope file, he says, I cried with my whole heart. The word over here is Leb. Cried is nothing but Kara. And then he said, Hear me, O Lord. The word here over here is nothing but Ana. The word Ana is not like the way to say that we are going to have here in the sense like Shamma, what we had in the code of 8085, like to hear and obey. But that doesn't mean over here. It is called as Ana, A N A H. That meant to say, Respond to me, O Lord. Do you know till when Lord our God would not respond or answer us or testify or speak or shout against us? Until we search him with all of our full heart. And that's what we lack in our ministry today. The pastor teacher doesn't search the Lord God with all of his whole heart. The believers not search my Christ with full of their whole heart. How would God the Father would respond to you? Do you think, doesn't he know how well what you sow that you will reap? With what intention you are coming to the Lord? With what motivation you are coming to my Christ? Do you not think he doesn't know that? Correct your thoughts. He knows very well. Even right from the day you have been in your mother's womb or before the foundation of the world as Ephesians 1, 4 through 6. All the days of your life of pilgrimage trip on this earth till the day you go back to death. He knows every single thought. Though you may consider second, he knows even the millionth of a second what you will think in that. We are dealing with the creator. We are not dealing with the creation or the, the creatures. The creator who formed us, he said in Isaiah 43, 7, for the glory of Jehovah. And we love to play games with him, thinking that we are coming with full heart unto my Christ. But the very purpose of your life, why you have been kept alive, he says, this dunamis ability of Lord God the Father has been given for the pastor teacher to exegete the passage from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. The believers who have been given the privilege of becoming kings and priests and ambassadors to Christ, they have been called to take in and gather in the word of God from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. People on this earth will have certain desires saying that before they die, they have to see this, they have to do this, they have to do that. But if they don't have a desire to seek the Lord God with all of their heart and learn the 
passages from Genesis 1 1 till to Revelation 20 21, iota upon iota and carrier upon carrier, then the very meaning and the purpose of your life, though you might have won the world, it's absolutely waste. It's mere waste. Though you might have won the world, he says, you have lost your own soul. You made your soul to starve. And in order to get back your food to your soul, he says, I cry out with my whole heart. And then hear me, O Lord. And when Lord God the Father is responding, what is his will? He says, I will keep thy statutes. The word keep is nothing but not say, which is called for us to guard, to preserve, to observe, and to protect, to maintain, and to obey. And what does he do, he says? He says that, I will not say, guard, protect, preserve, maintain, and obey what thy statutes, what is the word statutes, choke, the prescription, demands of the Bible. And you cannot guard until unless you cry to the Lord God with all of your heart. Therefore he says in verse 146, I cried unto thee, save me, deliver me, the word again cries again kara. The word deliver is yasha, to give me deliverance. And again he says, now I shall keep, but it is not now the word sham, not ser, but now the word over here is shamer, to absorb. And that's what he says over here, I shamer, that is, I attend and I will be circumspect to absorb. <laughs> The words in Ezekiel 44, 9, he says, Those who are uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in the flesh, though referring to the Jews, he says, I will not make them to come back to my tabernacle or to the place where the house of the Lord God is. The same thing over here. If you don't be circumspect, if you don't be alert about what over here, he says about the testimonies. Again, the word testimony is nothing but edda, to become witness or evidence. If you are not maintaining the evidence, how you could say that we are a distinguished people or the redeemed people of the Jehovah, our Lord. If you haven't, if you haven't shamer, shamer, you haven't been circumspect in protecting the testimonies of the Lord God, how you could say that we are the people of Jehovah? And what is that evidence he wants to prove, or the testimony is what he wants to prove, or the witness is what he wants to prove. In Exodus chapter 8, we have this verse for us to learn. It says particularly in verse 23, I will put a division. The word put is again sum, which meant to say set a point or place. What a division? What is the division? You may think there will be a demarcation between this and that. No. The word over here is pedutha. It has been originated from the word called as kemeha. And the word kemeha meant to say, the origin of this kemeha also comes from kadam. And the word kadam meant to say for us, to come beforehand and to meet, to receive the original standards of ransom deliverance. Therefore, we, the church as believers, have been delivered to show forth to the world that we are the evidences of his deliverance. The original meeting of the real deliverances. The word shall set you free, he said in John 8, 32, and sanctify them through the truth. The real deliverance is what we have is first the soul and the spirit in us. For what we have been given this shell of the body to protect it and to deliver it. Therefore, Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3, verses 10 and following, I haven't yet attained the physical resurrection, but I have reached the perfection, he's saying, the deliverance of the soul and the spirit, though he is yet in the flesh. Therefore, for me, for me, there is no need to abide in the flesh, yet I abide in this tabernacle for your sake, so that your joy should be fulfilled. In Philippians 1, 20 through 24. 
So what is the original deliverance that you have to meet? It is not just a division. The English may say division, but it doesn't meet anywhere. The word follows in the Hebrew. The Hebrew, it says redemption, deliverance. And that meant to say for us as a ransom which has been given. And to show forth the sign, as we read in 146 of the psalm, that he says, I cried unto thee, O Lord, deliver me. For what? So that I shall guard like circumspect men. That is to differentiate between holy and profane. To understand between dead and living. To understand the difference between light and darkness. As Second Corinthians 6 verses 14 and following teaches to us. How you could be equally yoked with unbelievers. What is a fellowship or what is a great conjugal relationship between light and darkness. Between the temple of God and the temple of Belial. Do you think there is something? No, there cannot be anything. And for that cause he wants to make evident that we are the witnesses of his testimonies in Ephesians 3.10. He continues, this now has to be made known to the principalities, the powers, the rulers, the authorities in the heavens and as well as on the earth. What the manifold wisdom of God, to the intent, he says now, the evidences not only to the fellow man, but the evidences to the fallen angels and the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the authority. Therefore, we have been stated the fight, what we fight is against the forces of darkness, which you cannot see in Ephesians 6. Therefore, wear your entire panoply of Christ so that you have to manifest your evidences that you are the virginal ones being delivered. The same thing in Exodus 8 he teaches to us. And he goes on to say, I will put set a point or I will make my life to make you to realize what is that division or ransom or deliverance or redemption between my people and thy people. In previous verse of 22, he said to them, it was a swarms of twice because they're coming close to the land of Goshen and these were the people dwelling in the land of Egypt. And coming over here in the church age, what is the sign of deliverance he has put? If we don't conform to the image of his dear beloved son for which cause you have been predestined in Christ. Then the words what God the Father has said. That these are my aleke neketesis, these will be my witnesses unto the end of the world. We are not proving that we are really a sign given to this world with an assignment in our hands. Therefore, he says, between my people and your people, and he says, tomorrow, that is in the time to come, in the future, that is tomorrow, shall this sign be, the word sign is nothing but a distinguishing mark, a distinguishing mark which was input on the fate or the face of Cain, because he's worried now, what happens if someone would kill him? So because of the mark what he had upon his forehead, he was not being put to death. That was a distinguishing mark, an example. In the same way, even you as believer in Christ have a distinguishing mark which is invisible to you. But in Revelation he says, those who all come to him I will give a name which he alone knows and a table upon his heart which he alone knows. A distinguishing mark. But now by the blood of Christ Jesus, our Lord of God, every believer has a mark of deliverance of Christ. Therefore, he says, take up your cross, not that you put a tattoo of cross upon your head or upon your body, but a cross that meant to say every day persecutions in Christ. Every day, though it is not necessary for it to face, it comes into your hand. Because you shall not learn doctrine. That's the plan of Satan. When you learn doctrine, you will grow up like a man. You will become the image of Christ. You will become more than conquerors because when Christ is with us, who is against us? So there will be a distinguishing mark to use this power and become a great man on this earth like the way the previous missionaries they were. So Satan doesn't want you to use that power, so it comes up with many troubles. At the same time, coming it with troubles, it doesn't just fill you with troubles, it also gives you with great thrill of your joy. And you know what does it give? It can give anything and everything on this earth except the word of God. It would love you to make yourself to be occupied, not to come wherever you are to Christ. 
It would give you obligations about your family. It would give obligations about your income. It would give obligations about your life. And it will love you to thrill, to still perish in the lustful patterns of your old sin nature by grieving and squelching and lying to the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It would give you each and everything that which is pleasing to you but it will never give to you the word of God because it knows very well besides troubles the only thing what man seeks on this earth is happiness not joy in Christ. Though the word of Lord God says godliness is always built up with persecutions about what? Those persecutions are that the people will not listen to doctrine they will reject. Those persecutions are that you will not have enough place for you to learn the word of God. And Satan gives you place for what? To thrill. To beautify your home. But it will never give place and time for you to learn the word of God. And the persecutions what a godly life will be always is that. No matter whatever trials they are. He gives the dedicated time to Christ. What it has to be given every day. The tithe of your time. Not the tithe of your income. But the tithe of your time. So what is the distinguishing mark we face? What is that redemption mark which we can show to the world? The answer is very simple, dear brethren. Not to be slothful, but to become wise considering your later end. In Proverbs chapter 22, we find in verse 13, a slothful man. And again in verse 15 of this same chapter 22, we find a foolish man. The people who don't distinguish between the people to whom God has called that I will put a distinguishing mark. A mark of redemption, a mark that you have been delivered, a mark that you are no longer in the world again as same you were earlier before believing in Christ. Therefore a passage by Paul he says for us, While we were in the flesh we knew Christ and after knowing Christ we are unknown to this flesh. That's what we have to be to the law. In 13 he says, the slothful one, he says, lion is outside in the midst of the squires or in the streets. I shall be murdered. The slothful one is the one who is sluggish, who is slumbered, who hasn't prepared for the will of God, who hasn't known that he bears upon his mind or upon his soul and spirit a distinguishing mark. And coming to verse 15 of one, verse 14 in the same Proverbs 22 to explain the context, he says, when you are becoming slothful, you will be like a menaced one to Jehovah. And when you become like a menaced one to Jehovah, to fall, you shall fall into a deep pit, which is like a mouth of a woman who is a stranger prostitute. You forsake your own cistern and you go to the broken vessels. And it's a very deep pit. The deep pit in the mental state for you, it's a deep threat of a grave or a trap of a grave. And coming towards 15, he says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. And do you think they are still grown up? In Hebrews 5, 11 and 12, we read, they that are still drinking milk, they cannot handle this unrighteous word of God. That's what the word says. They cannot handle this righteous word of God. Because they cannot handle, because they are still drinking milk. And then foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. The word child over here is very important for us. And do you know who are this child? Who cannot rightly divide the word of God, though they think they are having a lot of experience. Experience is another name which they give for their mistakes to be corrected. And they prove their 10 years of experience, the 10 years of experience in the mind to say, what all faults he has made, he wants to cover that. But when we come to the word of Lord God, there is no experience apart from learning the word from the original language of the scriptures. Because the spirit of the Lord God is the same in the past, in the present, in the future. So it is Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who speaks the truth and not we, the men. So that we don't need experience. But who know who are the child's over here? The child in the Hebrew is Nareems. Those who have come till to the age of 40 but haven't learned any responsibility to look. Their life concerning to the mind of Christ. And this Nareems, what they abide? They abide with foolishness. They're tied in their heart. 
And what is that foolishness today that is happening? First of all, they don't understand what is the distinguishing mark given to them. And second one, they will not understand. If you are a pastor teacher, it demands exegesis. You just go back for sheer words of oratory. You just love to summarize the details of your life, what you have gone through in the prejudiced mind of context. And teach them some stories and share words of theories. Like the positive inspirational books what you have. But now you will teach them. What is exegesis? What is the origin of the word? What is in the context of the word? And who you are? He says you are foolish ones. You are the people for folly. And what they do, you being tied in your heart of your youth, this with this foolishness, that is, though you are till to the age of 40, haven't realized the great work of the Lord God. And you know how to correct these foolish ones who haven't learned the distinguishing mark in their life that there have been difference between believers in Christ and the unbelievers of this world, or the temple of Christ and the temple of Belial, or the people of light and the people of darkness, and the people of being the good ones to Christ and the people who are being bad ones to devil. You know, to learn simple example, the hell will be filled with good moral people. The heaven will be filled with immoral people because they are believed in Christ, they are saved. They are filled with such foolish youths. And therefore we find a distinguishing mark in the heaven as well. Whether you build with gold, silver, precious stones. Every day you come to gather it and look upon the mind of Christ and gather to do the will of God. Or every day the grace of Lord God as a slothful one who said, If I go to the streets, there is a lion which is going to murder me. What all you have done, the grace of God, every day, every day, every day, it will be given there you as an account. And that every day account you need to pay to the Lord when you go back there for what you have done in this flesh. Therefore, he says, the slothful one says such and such, but the foolish one is tying in his heart. What? Right from his youth, he's tying foolishness. And what is that foolishness? Blaming others. First of all, they did not realize why they have been made on this earth. What was the purpose of them to be kept alive on this earth? But they have all the reasons to blame. Their parents, their environment, their conditionals, of whatever the status quo fronts they are in. And at the end, the Bible calls foolishness is bound or tied up in their heart, the heart of a Nareems who are till to the age of 40 but haven't reached responsibility towards God or towards their own family. And how to correct them? He gives a solution for us. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him, but the conditional clause. And over here, when we look upon this condition, the word club, which is nothing but Shebeth, the Hebrew word Shabbat, which meant to say, number one, as a stick or a rod of authority, what we take. He says first, it gives them punishment. The very first thing what happens is the punishment. Warning discipline, and then taking you till to the point of death and releasing you, that's your punishment. So that now you can become a writing one of a scribes. The punishment has been given not to become a good converted Christian, but to become a good disciple, growing up as, joining as disciples and growing up as grammatias. That's the word. Writing, that's the second step. And from writing, the third step is for us as you grow up for fighting in the Lord. When you become a scribe, you now come back to promulgate the truth. Earlier you were a sinner, but now you become a saint. The same Apostle Paul is an example. Earlier he was a Saul, then he became Paul. The same man who was trying to destroy or persecute the Church of Christ. He became now a great prisoner for Christ. Only when you become a scribe you can know the importance of fighting to the Lord. Or fighting the Lord's battles. The very word we read, Shaddad in Jeremiah 51-53. 63 or 53 correct 
the Shaddad power, the power, the spoilers who come there from the Lord. So the fighting ones for what they are, they are there only for the Lord's battle. We have been placed over here for the Lord's work and for the Lord's battle. The same thing over here. First thing, he gives you punishment, chastisement to look what is your purpose of life. When you wake up to the purpose of your life, first you become scribe and then you fight. And when you fight, he gives you to make ruling. Talking with dogmatical authority and performing the deeds of my Christ with dogmatical authority. And then when you rule, he says, that will be the pattern of your walk of life that is called as walking. The first four things which you need to learn in your life. First, he gives you punishment to correct your life. If you're already growing up as a scribe, he makes you to fight the Lord's battle. If you're fighting the Lord's battle, he will make you to rule with authority because those who have been led by the Spirit of the Lord God, they will not keep rituals. Galatians 5.18 and he says in 5.19 the flesh again in 5.20 and 21 and 22 we read the spirit the fruit of the spirit What will be the importance of a spirit filled man over the flesh? So he shall not lead in the standards of rituals any longer, but he will be in the spirit of the Lord in doing the will of God So the rod he says the word shaketh and the word shaketh meant to say for us First, he punishes you, he corrects you to become a scribe, he makes you to fight the Lord's battle, he causes you to rule in that way, and he gives you the pattern of walking in your life in such life. And that's what he calls you when you're walking in such life to be the scepter, that's the rod of authority. Until and unless you have the Shabbat or the rod or the stick, that foolishness or folly that you have tied in your heart shall not leave you though you are growing till to the age of 80 or though you may live over here 120 years before the age of Narims, that is before the age of below 40 if you haven't become a scribe then you never understand what are the battles you need to fight for the Lord what are the things that you need to rule in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit you will never realize what are the things that should become the pattern of walk of your life. You will be totally far away and alienated from the life of God which has planned for every believer in the church age. You will be totally alienated not to realize that God the Father has made us to show forth as a distinguishing mark to this world. He has delivered us, He has ransomed us. He has redeemed us for the purpose of Christ to the highest. Therefore he calls the rod of discipline. The word discipline is again Musa. That is nothing but chastening. And today this is what is lacking today in our pulpits in the present Christendom by the pastor teachers itself. They don't have the authority of discipline, first of all. If they would be disciplined, then they would be looking upon to carry the work of my Christ for the ministry, what they have received from the Lord, to teach from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21, and not just to jump in the churches where they have appointed for a low salary, and they say, we have three years of experience in this church, and I am going for a bigger church, which gives me double the salary of this church. They are just concentrating on their way of belly of life. They are not disciplined first. If they have been trained very well in the fear of the Lord God and they have been disciplined in the work of the Lord God, they would look. What is that rod? The rod which could cause them first to look into their life punishment if they are out of the way of the will of God. Or if they are in the will of God, it would, live, it would lead them to become scribes. When they are scribes, they would fight the Lord's battle. When they are fighting the Lord's battle, they will rule with authority the exousia power given to them under the dunamis strength, empowering them. And when they have been ruling with authority, they will go ahead in their life walking that same way of life. And they do not need to be reminded again and again to say, be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because the every breath they walk, they walk in the marching, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because they wake up to realize without the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they are absolutely dead. 
It is only the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which rules them, which reigns them to the highest. And if they're not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they know very well they cannot stand. And therefore they constantly be aware, be taking heed, and diligently they seek and they search to be always in the will of that great Lord God, the Father. They don't want to grieve or squelch or wax more than a baby what they take care, they take care of the involuntary ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And such are the men who claim to walk breath by breath. And whenever they sin, they come back to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, within a millionth of a second because they know without Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they cannot do anything. They cannot conquer day by day battles, neither they can exhibit day by day exhibition of holiness to Christ. They always seek and do the things which have been given for them to perform in the mind of Christ. They know that they have been distinguishing mark upon them. The distinguishing marks, if you look upon Galatians 6, 18, particularly when Apostle Paul says, Let no man disturb me because I bear in my body the marks of my Christ. That's a distinguishing mark. A mark to understand the burden of the Lord God. A mark to realize that we have been called to do something great. In the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, greater than what John the Baptist could be a forerunner because the one who has been born least in this kingdom is far greater than John the Baptist. And if John the Baptist was greater than all the ones of the Old Testament being born to a woman and we have been born again in the Spirit, then how much more it has to be? And when the rich young man comes and asks the Lord in Mark 10, in verses 17 and following, God the Father teaches to him that is Christ our Lord our God. No man is good except God. And you know what does it meant to say for us? As we read John 17, 23, it is Christ our Lord our God who also indwells in us. And Lord God the Holy Spirit indwells in us as per his prayer request for begging for behalf of us in John 14, 16. And you never realize that till you realize that you have a purpose-driven life with Christ on this earth. And your life has meaning only with Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this earth. So when Lord of a God said to that angry rich man, to that ruler who has come to ask him what to do to get to inherit, inherit this eternal life, Christ, O Lord of a God, took the form of flesh, therefore no flesh is good. There is nothing good in this flesh that you can claim before God saying that I can do better. And the sad part is, more than Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, He indwells in the flesh of us. Like a wind we cannot see, but the power and its effect has been felt. How much more, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has been grieved and squelched in us. Therefore, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ says, any blasphemy against the Son can be forgiven, but the blasphemy against Lord God, the Holy Spirit, can never be forgiven. If you would just realize your own property being taken by the other man and destroying it, would you keep quiet? Doesn't, doesn't he teach an example when the first, his, when a worker was sent and then a messenger and then at last his own son was being sent and they thought he is the heir. If we would destroy him, we can have this entire field for us as our property. And then what does the owner do, he says? When he comes, he shall throw them out. If you are destroying the property of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that is what your body is now, the temple of the living Lord of a God, and He dwells in you. And when He is indwelling in you permanently and His fellowship is temporary, because whenever you grieve, squelch, or wax, or lie, or resist Lord God, the Holy Spirit, He is not controlling you, but He is dwelling in you. But He wants your residence to be always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. There is no excuse for that. He wants the things to be done only in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he has been claimed as God the Father in heaven is holy, so even you ought to become holy. And that's the very key purpose of our life. Therefore, when he's saying to that rich young man, accept God, no one is good. Is referring to God the Father or there in the sequence because Son has taken the form of the flesh. Though he was not sin, was made carried upon him the sins of the world. 
Lord God, the Holy Spirit is at least involving in us. And we have been in the form of the flesh and the form of the old sin nature operating. And we constantly go to grave. We constantly go to squelch. Therefore, he said to that rich young man, God, Theos. They know the word Theos. We take the word from L. And that L is the origin of the word Elohim in the Hebrew. And when we read that in Genesis 1.26, let us make man. It's a first plural word. And the word plural refers there again, God the Father, God the Son, and Lord God the Holy Spirit. Except God, that meant to say what? We have only the forms for us. But they have the Trinity with them. Except them, none can be good on this earth. So teaching that lesson to him, he goes on to prove the discipline that has been needed for us, the discipline that we need to be trained, the distinguishing mark that we need to put, so that even we could be realizing in this world, earlier we were dead, we were dead, we were dead to sins. But being coming to Christ again, we are alive. We are dead in our trespasses and sins, he writes in Ephesians, so that we could be now, through Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, alive to this great and unique way of life ever designed and given to the sinful mankind. And thus he says in Proverbs 22, 15, for us, the rod of correction. And what does he do? That is the discipline part will remove from him such foolishness. And the only discipline part, what he demanded right from this rich man as well in Mark 10. You have been doing this well, good. And he, smiled, and he smiles at him and he says, what all property you have, you just go and sell it off. And carry a cross and follow me. I'll give you greater rewards in the heaven. The rich man had a lot of property we read. And he did not go to sell them. Or come back and follow my Christ by taking his cross. And he said how hard it is for a rich man to enter. And he gives an example. The camel can get along into the gate. Of eye of a needle. That is what the entrance gate of this place. Wherever they would be. And they love to have many speculations about this word. And they would say some, the eye of the needle will require only a single thread to get in. And some of the people would say for us that when the camel, they used to travel on that, they used to have some load. First the camel would get along in that. First they should remove that gold load, whatever they carry upon the camel back. All these sheer ruts, we don't want to look. The only thing what we find over here is that it is difficult for a rich man to enter into the gate. And what is that gate? The entrance of the heaven. How? Because he is minding still the earthly things to possess. And because of that earthly things what you are possessing on this earth, you cannot make your way to go to heaven. Therefore he says, sell it off. In the seven parables what we read in Mark Matthew chapter 13, the one who found a great treasure, he went and he sold everything and he bought the price to buy that field. The great treasure is found in Christ. The great treasure is found in the word of God, not in the earthly possessions. Therefore, Christ, our Lord of God, in John 6, verse 26, he says, Labor for the food which perisheth not, rather than laboring for the food which perisheth. He said the same thing to them. The thieves, the robbers will take on this earth. Or the moths will eat off. But treasure up your treasure in the heaven where there can no one be taking it out. Neither they are thieves or robbers. And that meant to say what to the rich man. Forget everything and follow me. As Levi followed the Lord. As Peter followed the Lord. The left of everything and they came to my Christ. So it is wherever you are, live off everything and get back to Christ and to his work. Don't make your heart to be saddened when you're living the things of this world, the pleasures of this earth. There is nothing pleasure for you to fulfill in this flesh. As long as you can think you have your testosterone and oxytocin to go along in your flesh. Nothing pleasure for you apart from Christ's salvation and the right woman with whom you enjoy all the days of your life under the sun. And that's also his vanity. Without Christ, you cannot enjoy your right woman because you don't renovate the standards of your thinking in mind. 
Above all, you can think you can possess many things like the way how Solomon thought he would make great riches, he would make great family, he would make great children. But all the things he concludes in Ecclesiastes 2.27, the things which have been designed for man on this earth is wisdom, knowledge, so that you can have great joy. But if ever you pass out from that path, it gives you depression. Ah, now we read that word. A depression that also includes a rival wife for you. And when you're coming to the depression, you will come back to look. What is this punishment that the Lord has given to me? And in that punishment, you come to become a scribe. By recorrecting yourself, as we read that in Psalms 119, verses 145. The very sole purpose of his life, what does he claim? Lord, when I cry unto thee with all of my heart, when I cry unto thee with all of my heart, when I'm going through such depressions in your life, do you ever cry to the Lord God with all of your heart? And whenever you cry, make sure that you are dealing with Lord God, the Creator, not the creation of the creatures to be laid off. He knows that cry with the voice of you, whether it's a true repented cry or a hypocritical cry or a cry for deliverance of momentary things. He knows very well what is your cry. You're crying the Lord God for what purpose? He knows it very well. Don't ever think. You can make God the Father to be mocked. He knows your cry very well. Whether it's a cry of a true repented heart or whether it's a cry of a true hypocritical heart. You may think 0 to 100%. If I am somewhere near 90 or 99, the remaining 1%, God the Father, could forgive me. No, he wants clearly 100% of repentance. Even when the eunuch in Acts chapter 8 wanted to take baptism, he asked, what hinders me? And Philip tells to him, if you are truly repenting in the Lord, and if you believe with all of your heart, And today men love to deceive Christ my God by saying that they're truly repenting ones and they're truly doing the things pertaining to the Lord God. But you know in return what they're doing? They are deceiving their own lives. They have just deceived their own life. And that's what he says. Saying that and as they went along the way, in verse 36 of Acts chapter 8, eunuch said, see here is the water. It is not the Philip who is saying, but the eunuch, the one who wants to repent, the one who wants to wash away his, his absolute old manner of life. What doth hinder me to be baptized? In verse 37, Philip said, if you believe with all thy heart, if you believe, the word believe is nothing but to make the thing to be true, what I have told you about Christ. And even if we today believe, then only we can cry unto the Lord God to become the disciples of Christ. And then he said, you may take with all of your heart when you believe that it is lawful. And then the one you commanded the chariot. Before commanding the chariot to stand still, he answered and said, I believe Christ is the Son of God. Today we are not having this experience in our life. We don't cry unto the Lord God with all of our heart. We don't come back to Lord God with the punishment one is giving to us. We just come to become a good believer. We just come to become a good converted Christian. We just come to give you good tithes in the church. We just come to give you monthly ones attendance of tithe or yearly ones of attendance or festival attendance. You just come not to give every day the things that are pertaining to Lord God so that you can make your account clear with my Christ. You just come because of the punishment to become 
that which has been as rituals in your denominational standards. And you continue on that. But never you will come to become a scribe. Never you will come to realize what is the purpose that Lord God the Father has punished me so much so that every believer has to be a disciple growing up has to be scribes in the Lord. Never you have heard that. And as the people will teach you, like people, the priest, the priest is the way, the way the people want them to be. As when in 2 Timothy 4 we read, the time will come and people will not end your sound Bible doctrine, that they will gather themselves teachers after their own heart, who would certainly lead or heap them themselves that which is happy for their itching ears to hear. What your itching ears love to hear, that's what they teach. And when you've gone through such punishment, they think you haven't paid for so many months the tithe, so pay the tithe and clear your debt. And then God will be happy with you and you can be happy with Him. How many days you haven't been in the church, so come to church weekly once, give attendance, God will be happy with you. And these are the things what the word we read, fullos, practices, praso fullos of John 3.20. Which are absolutely worthless. When you're facing the punishment, God the Father wants you to become a writing scribe so that you could fight the Lord's battle. You could rule with the power of God in your life, reigning through the word of God at every beat of your heart. And that could become the way of your life. That could be the walking of your life. And yet today, dear brethren, we are able to find men in our pulpits who haven't taken such discipline in their entire life. Who haven't gone through such discipline in the Lord and yet they come to become scribes and teachers for you. Because of the great men who have called in the signs of this time of their levels of wisdom. Therefore, long back in Ezekiel chapter 44, we read in verse number 5, telling to them the things what will pertain even in the millennium. Perceive, ra'a, inspect, look diligently, absorb carefully, scrutinize it and consider what is this. And how you consider it with your own eyes, it doesn't say with other men's eyes. And with your own ears, <laughs> what a concept it is for us to understand that we need to be blind and deaf to the world and we need to be alive and lighten our eyes to the word of God and we have to make our ears opening up to hear the divine revolution of the word of God and we miss it and we are not ashamed of it that we miss it because we don't come with the true repentance of our heart to the Lord God we don't cry to my Christ that which has been demanded by the Bible to cry and be making sure in your life or make sure to you, dear brethren, he knows what is your cry. Is that cry of a hypocritical one? Or is that cry of a true repented heart to the Lord? He knows that very well. And the measure what you measure back, the same measure he will measure you when he says in Matthew 7, we are talking about the triple compound discipline over there, but over here when we consider it says, what you sow to the Lord, the same thing is going to reap you back. <laughs> and you may think, I have become so good, I have become so moral, I have become so fantastic of a man. And God the Father knows very well up to what extent you are fantastic. You may be fantastic in the sight of men. The same thing he said, the thing which is great in the sight of men is an abomination to the Lord. Always for becoming disciples or making disciples, there will be few men. The same thing what we read. If Christians, they have been used thrice. The word disciples has been used 269 times. 1 is to 90, the ratio we find. Or approximately 90. If we can find Christians easily... And then for every 90 members, you will find one disciple. Every 90 members, you will find one disciple. It's very rare. 
But God the Father knows who they are, that they belong to Him. They have the seal of the Lord God, He said in Second Timothy chapter 2. And they that are of the Lord God, having the name of Christianity for them, what they do? Having this onoma joto onoma, we read that. They depart from iniquity. Adikia standards, they just throw it off. They just don't love to look the punishment as a resultant to be obligated to lord some moral duties or moral rituals. They want to get in now to the serious business with the Lord. And they throw out any mannerism of rituals. They neither consider it. They don't even consider to their mind any rituals for them to be close enough or great enough. They just love to have only one thing in the law. And that one thing is nothing but, dear brethren, become seriously the disciples of the Lord. Lord our God doesn't need Christians. He wants disciples. Crying with all of your heart. That's what the word for us, he says in Psalms 119 in 145. And the word over here, what we look and what we listen and what we understand. I cry with all of my heart. And the word over here, here is not the word Shama, but it meant to say Ana, that is meant to say to respond, to, to answer back. And you're crying with, to, with your, all of your heart, that is with full heart, a heart of true repented ones, a heart to look into the glory of Christ and to make up your life to the manifestation of his life. Then he will hear us, then he will respond us, then he will answer us back. And if you don't cry with all of your heart, just take it. The people who are responding to you, they are not from God. When he is responding, he responds to you to learn doctrine. He gives shepherds after his own heart. Jeremiah 3.15, who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. He will not give you shepherds of gimmicks. He will not give you shepherds who are going to entertain you with miracles or healings or tongues. The way how you respond or the way how you cry unto the Lord, depending upon that intensity, is going to give you the responders. If you go for glossal lali, yeah, he's going to give you Angar Samutas Demon as your responder. If you go for rituals, he's going to give you share of men who will talk only oratory but not the truth in exegesis. If you love to come back and sow with your gimmicks, he's going to give you his tactics of gimmicks. It will not make you to find the real word of God until you come with a real heart. The way in Nehemiah chapter 8 when we read, the people they cried when, they, when the word of Lord God was being read. They cried bitterly as if they lost their only one son. Because they were grieving and squelching and waxing the law of God then given for them and not performing it or executing it in their entire life. And you don't cry to the Lord God with all of your heart, a repented heart, he will not respond. The way how we read in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius, a man who was a devoted one to the Lord, and his prayers, we need to read that word in Acts chapter 10. The very next chapter where we stop in Acts chapter 8, we find in chapter 10 in verse 1, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian. The first one he uses the word Eusebian man. A man who is always having to show reverence to Lord God's will and is far well into reverence to worship that which is good and perfect in the sight of God. And he feared God. The word feared is phobio. That is always to be alarmed if he would go against the word of God. And the word Theos is again for us Elohim. With all his house, he is not only himself, but also a man who truly called, called unto the Lord with all of his heart to be along with one accord in his family, even in his home. Today, pastor may be good, the wife and children are maybe not good. Therefore, the first thing our home has to be set aside as an example to others. If it doesn't maintain your own home well, then how you can rule the church? But here Cornelius, a man, feared God along with all of his house and who gave 
poeo much alms the word alms is nothing but charity donation to the people and prayed to god that is the things that which we are lacking or making up to as a beg meant to say dio mai to god always constantly daya pantos the word meant to say through all time and this man we look he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of god coming to him and saying unto him carnolius and then when he looked on him he was afraid and said what is it lord and he said unto him thy prayers and thy arms are come for a memorial before god the prayers and the arms that is what as a thing to be preserved in memory of him as a remembrance and every place you go what memory you give to lord god as a remembrance to keep over there so that he could be mindful do you bow down your knees and pray to the lord there so that it could be a point of remembrance and then he says send a man to jopa one fall for simon whose surname is peter and then the angel of the lord god spake unto cornelius was departed he calls two servants and then he says the man who lodged there in jopa the simon peter whose house is by the sea side he shall tell the word tell is nothing but for us lala o to ata what you ought to do what is binding that you have to do the simple reason he says believe in the lord and savior jesus christ and from here we learn that god the father hears our attentive to those who call him in pure heart and the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons with a great expectation of a pain constantly claiming before lord god and if cornelius was not at a believer if his prayers and arms were considered to be a memorial to give him as a reward sending christ and how much more will be the unbelievers on this earth though they may not be praying to god but their way of meditation to their gods and that's the reason god the father has given you much time to say in first timothy 2:4 none to perish in second peter 3:9 he is long suffering and waiting so that none to perish but first everyone should come to the knowledge of his grace that is we the believers have to do the work rather becoming slothful foolish ones or falling into the trap of a deep pits of a woman and romans 8:16 through 19 says the adult sons have to be manifested and the creation is awaiting 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 <laughs> if you still don't cry to lord god with a true repented heart though these unbelievers may not have a chance to believe in christ because of your ministry which has been failed not to do the will of god for what cause he has called you and you come to cry to the lord god for your petitions he never answers you and you come to the church with a hypocritical heart to cry to the lord god he gives you those hypocritical men back for you to backfire on you as we read an example of the same apostle paul when the man who went along to be healed the sons of skeva isn't it saying that i adjure in the name of christ in the name of this in the name of paul or in the name of christ and then the demons come and just wash them off they beat them black and blue and then we find saying the demon answering back i know christ i know paul but i don't know who you are the same thing will apply to you if you don't cry to the lord god with all of your heart the one is coming to be a ruler in your church what he is is he from god have you cried to lord god to send to shepherds after his own heart I am just crying in the way the sons of Skewa did. The same thing happens when the unclean spirit leaves the home. It is no longer the home of this man. It is the home of God. But now, because of his ignorance and arrogance, not to cleanse it and keep it pure for Christ, he goes with it, and it gets with him seven more more wicked spirits than him. And that's what it is happening today for you in your lives in the present Christendom. 
as long as you fail to cry unto the Lord God with a true heart. So long you will find in your life great misery dancing upon your head. No matter whatever you think. Because punishment has been given to come back and cry unto the Lord God. Plan B of Ecclesiastes 2.27 So that you could become a scribe joining as disciples. So that you could fight the Lord's battle. So that you could rule with authority in the Lord's power. And you could walk always in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. But you don't cry to the Lord looking upon the punishment with a true heart. And as you go to sow to the Lord, so he's going to reap the fruit for you. Here Cornelius sowed to the Lord God with a true fear of being usable and believer unto the Lord. Along with him his entire house was been saved. And how the Lord God works on the other part, he makes Peter to eat, which is unclean food thrice and when he comes to Cornelius home he knows now that was a vision given by the Lord to say there is no difference between Gentiles and the Jews the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit is the same upon all those who call upon him with an attitude of devoted men like Cornelius true Eusebian believers in Christ if we don't cry unto the Lord our God with the true Isabian believers like Cornelius, then forget it, being unbelievers, being Gentiles, we could ever enjoy the things pertaining to God. But yet he comes to give you the life like Cornelius. If you're not following the pattern like this Gentile man, Cornelius, though we are Gentiles and grafted once into that one olive plant of this Roman's love, we are going to miss it. Because we are not giving our heart a true repented one. So that the very purpose when he's going to respond us, he says that I have been kept alive for the purpose of not say to be circumspect in the demands of your word of God and to rule according to that. That's what he says in 145 of the Cope file. I will keep not say God protect. I'll be more circumspect with thy prescriptions and a man who has dear near-death experience can really know what is the importance of life when he comes out of that experience now this man who knows now very well what is the real death of experience he says now answer me O Lord once respond to me I will be to give your priority number one in my life and then the same thing in the book of Psalms chapter 41 we have a word for us to learn in verse 9 or 10 he says you O Lord be merciful unto me again the word cana the word meant to say gracious show favor unto me and establish me comb the word rise me up is nothing but comb that I may require them that I might show them what is the covenant which you made to me as a distinguishing mark to this people to whom the enemies are evil disease the one who hated me the one who spake vanity the one who are my enemies beginning with verse 5 till to verse number 9 he says my own familiar friend and everyone I want to require them, I want to show them what is that shalom of covenant which you have made with me to this people. Show favor me, O Lord. And 119 in 145, he says, show grace, O Lord. Answer me, O Lord. I not share thy chalk demands. And what a word we have for us to learn every day. As a distinguishing mark, he has separated us from the world. He said in Exodus 8.24, long back to them, this will be a sign. He teaches the same thing for us to understand. The bona fide gift given to us is to make manifest to this world right now the distinguishing wisdom of the manifold wisdom of God to this people. And yet we are not proving what is the distinguished mark in Christ. 
what a sad thing it is for us. The way how you sow, the same thing you will reap. And if you are not making up your life according to the standards to be a wise one in the Lord, Lord alone help you at the judgment seat of Christ. At the same time on this earth, with what heart you call unto the Lord, with such men he responds you, has you responded to sons of Sceva, because they were false ones, and they claimed that they know Christ, but they weren't. In return they were beaten black and blue. If you don't have a true repentant heart like that, you at least. What is the worth you call to be a man and to take care of your fellow companion who wants to be fed in the word of God? Think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his grace. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself. We shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry Sathon Lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season because the diamond from my witnesses where you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in willing trinity followed by Bible in our hands and number two diamond from my witnesses our hearers. If there are no hearers dear brother not worry besides nature the entire angelic host will be witnesses and what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go dear brethren you decide as we shall come back and communicate as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of his glory every day. Think over these issues. Tomorrow we shall come back and communicate. Infinitely divine Holy Father what a great and unique privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the word. Father we pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit would enlighten and challenge us by this message which you have given for us so that we could correct our lives according to the will of the Lord and call upon you in truth and in spirit so that we could worship you in truth and in spirit. In all of these things, O oh Lord, you alone might be glorified. In Christ's much less pure, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten and challenge us by this message. Amen.